so now we are going to start with basic operation of gas tanker gas carrier so this is a ship coming out from the dry dock or yard and we have to load gas so first uh, as we do in uh, oil tankers or some chemical tankers cargoes also before putting the cargo or gas to avoid flammable atmosphere, we have to put inert gas. So the process is almost same and you know, but here we have a very pure inert gas generator because gas cargoes are very pure and expensive. So inert gas is uh, generator is there with burner, scrubber and dryer. And uh, gas cargoes are also very water sensitive and also we are like in LNG, we are loading at uh, minus uh, 142 or something so the dew point as per the gas like propane and all minus 42 so dew point of the gas should be minus uh, the gas there should be no water no moisture so the gas should be absolutely dry because if there is moisture with it will cool that is so there will be some ice crystal and then it will be a problem with the pump or discharging so the gas main part precaution of inerting gas should be absolutely dry and oxygen is less than 1%. So inert gas is uh, going into the tank and uh, main air is going displaced to the atmosphere. So this is displacement method. So oxygen concentration has to be reduced to below 5% that we already know, but uh, IG generator gives a very pure oxygen less than 1%. So dew point of the cargo tank must be lower than the cargo to be carried. So if you're carrying propane, it has to be less than minus 42. Oxygen content, we have different uh, gas meters monitoring for oxygen content of the gas, of the tanks, cargo pipings, machinery. Then all the piping has to be also inerted. Pump discharge piping are also to be carried out. Then next is purging. Purging means now we are putting cargo vapor in the gas. So inert gas will come out from the purge pipe. That is called inert gas purging. So that we can go put to atmosphere or to shore as per the requirement of terminal or if you are at sea or this thing. So this, uh, especially in uh, fully refrigerated or refrigerated cargo of uh, gas chips. When we are putting the cargo vapors, we have to take out the inert gas because inert gas is not, because of its properties, it's not able to compress in the real equation plant, which we will see later. So real equation plant is used for uh, keeping the gas cooled. The ga this gas we are loading in the liquid form. Why we are loading in liquid form? Because uh, six, you can uh, compress it 600 times. If uh, this tank can contain 600 meter cube of uh, gas, then in one meter cube only that much liquid can come at that pressure what we are loading. So at that temperature here for refrigerated ships and for pressurized ship that pressure. So refrigerated ships, uh, if you are putting the gas at minus 42, this gas will come in one meter cube. So we, that's for that we are using real equation plant and we need to purge this inert gas out. So this is purging of inert gas or degassing. So cargo vapors we are putting into the bottom or also on the from the sides we will see and the gas exchange already takes place from the bottom and also we have to make sure because when the gas is going there will be a lot of well, pressure rise we have to continuously monitor the pressure of course it's going out from the perch by still and when the car Tent of the cargo gas in the tank exceeds above 95% inert gas, purge or gassing up to be finished. So cargo gas is more than 95%. 
then we can finish in our in our thing. Then cool down operation. So as we discussed that this uh, ship we are loading cargo on a uh, fully refrigerated ship and uh, whenever you see this shape also prismatic shape is mostly for refrigerated ships like you have in your ice tube tray in your freezers this is called prismatic shape so from the shore when we are loading this cargo it is at minus 42 and our whole temperature is ambient temperature 25 30 whatever atmosphere you are if you put the cargo directly there will be a lot of stresses and it can break the tank so first we just put the vapor slowly slowly and cool down the tank to minus 42 slowly slowly we are doing it generally up uh, minus 10 degrees uh, 10 degrees uh, per hour maximum but it will also depend on the design of the tanks and the system so we have to see the operational manual for the dive so cool down is also necessary to avoid excessive tank pressure during bulk loading so if you are putting lot of cargo at a time and this cargo is actually gas in normal temperature it will start becoming gas and there will be huge pressure on the gas so first we are putting the cargo liquid cargo very very slowly through these sprayers top middle and bottom sprayers so we start with bottom then middle and then from the top we keep spraying and cool down the tank to avoid pressure and bring it to that temperature which we want These are the spray nozzles of the. So again, the monitoring the pressure is very, very important because a lot of uh, this once you're spraying the liquid, again, the temperature is normal. So it will be a lot of gas will be coming out. So we have to use the real equation plant, whatever gas is coming out, keep converting into liquid and keep sending in the tank. So let's see the CCR cargo control room and monitoring system. Almost same with like oil and chemical tanker with few differences. Cargo console panel, you have all the pumps and all, then ballast console, all the walls, pumps. Then gas detection system is very important. We have in this, you have two places, gas detection system in the cargo area and also in the accommodation part, there's a separate gas detection system. Then the cargo control, we have, uh, we can control all the operations. We have all the pressure gauges and recorders of the pressure gauges, pressures, levels with all the with papers. Main and emergency cargo from discharge pressure and amperes, current, all controls you can see from this here. Temperature indicators and recorders of each cargo tank. Generally, we have very less, like around five or this, like we have five tanks in oil tanker, same like gas carrier also, it's like that. Then emergency shutdown and alarm for the pumps. Then real equation plant compressors parameter. This is uh, different in this gas carrier, low indicators. Then we have a cargo instrument room. So in the instrument room, we have the starting panel for all the cargo pumps, like you have in engine room. This is a separate room, emergency cargo pumps. If you have a car, like if main pump fails, we can use emergency cargo pump. Then real equation compressor, separate controls. And real equation compressor motor fan room also is separate. Then the, uh, the control boxes on the deck there are two boxes box a and box c and then you have a pump switch box so box a consists of all the pressure indicators and pressure switches for cargo tank hold and real equation line 
all the pressure indicators are transmitted to the CCR. Then you have box B, which contains the cargo level indicator and the emergency cargo pump discharge pressure gauges. Then pump switch box contains the main and emergency cargo start and stop switches. Now let's see at the manifold, we have a main pipeline and vapor return pipeline. Then we have pressure gauges for all the pipelines, thermometers for all the pipeline. Thermometer is very important here for the real equation plant and pressure transmitters and thermometer transmitter all should be, it should have all sensor transmitting to the CCR. Then trunk top, trunk top is the top part of the tank where real equation line you have like this real equation line temperature indicator then all monitoring all the cargo tanks and other cargo related machinery parameters and alarm we have this console panels which you have in ship's office or ccr wheelhouse and engine room also so pressure and temperature level of all tanks we can see everywhere bridge ccr and and uh, engine room and all of, of the associated pipeline also. Then the cargo system and equipment. As per international gas code IGC, cargo pipelines are not allowed uh, beneath the deck level. So all cargo pipelines has to be above the deck and uh, they generally pass through the tank domes and on the main deck. So most of the pipeline you can see are on deck only, there's no pipeline. And they are fitted with most fitted with liquid and vapor manifolds, liquid manifold and vapor manifold. Vapor manifold is generally like this, red, yellow, red or yellow. Then you have the pipelines, liquid line, vapor line, condensate line or real equation plant line to make the vapor to liquid again then liquid and vapor crossover liquid crossover header vapor header real equation line header or condensate header relief line to relieve the pressure or deep uh, then high pressure line for booster discharge if you are discharging at a very high pressure then drain line then inert gas line for inerting the tank which we saw in starting now let's see the cargo tanks we have uh, gas carriers have uh, different types of consideration for cargo tanks fully refrigerated fully pressurized or semi refrigerated or semi pressurized so that we will see in detail. So most of the NYK ships, if you see, for example, are designated for carrying gas under atmospheric pressure and refrigerated conditions. So let's see the example of LPG, like propane, butane, if it is carried in the refrigerated condition. So we have this example of uh, type A prismatic tank, prismatic shape I already told you, and type A, you will see, for pressure less than 0 0.7 millibars. So because this uh, ships are carrying uh, cargo at very negative temperatures, the tank can have cracks or because of thermal stress. So they, therefore, that's why we have this uh, independent tanks on this gas carriers. So this independent tanks are no way welded or connected directly to the ship cell. Here we have some chokes, which are like wooden supports, wooden blocks, which are kept so that uh, the tank in case of rolling or something should not move freely too much. <laughs> then uh, we there are uh, secondary barrier or primary barriers. So this is, uh, this is the tank. So the, first layer of the tank out 
outer layer of the main outer layer of the tank is called the primary barrier then you have in between the insulation like you have in your thermos flask or something this is full of insulation of perlite you will see what insulation is this so this insulation uh, also is asked in orals so next after this whatever the hull surface is there is the secondary barrier so if there is a spill first this will act as a secondary barrier second barrier then also we have the first barrier then only the spill can take place then you have the hold space this is all empty space is called the hold space it's like you can consider it's a hold of a bulk carrier in which the gas tank has been kept so this is the hold space which is uh, empty so to avoid the leak and all sometimes we put air or inert gas depends on different constructions so this is the tanks so generally i can see four only four uh, tanks so these gas carriers are big tanks and you can see a center line bulkhead so it's a full one tank which is uh, divided by the center line bulkhead into port and starboard to control the rolling and list and all those things So these ships are having minimum service temperature of minus 46 degrees centigrade means can carry cargo up to minus 46 and specific gravity of 2.61 grams per centimeter cube. Then each cargo tank is fitted with two safety relief valves. These are called MARVs, Mar maximum arrival relief valve setting. MARVs, what is the MARV setting? There's a special type of uh, pressure relief valves you can see. Generally, uh, you see this tank is only on the pressure side. You don't have the vacuum side. And there's a spring setting. So we'll see this work, working later on. But this spring will lift up and this uh, gas will be passing through this. So there will be a pipeline from the tank, if you see. Suppose uh, here you have a tank and from the tank this pipeline is coming and joining here into this relief wall and then uh, when the pressure is too much above this setting it will lift the spring and the gas will pass here and from here the gas will pass through and there will be atmos venting in the atmosphere and the gas will go to the atmosphere or if we want to send it to a shore then this gas will go to the manifold and from manifold it will connect it and go to the shore tank okay So let's continue. So maximum relief fall setting on this ship is minus two to 28 kPa gauge, depending on the cargo existing design. All pipelines and equipments to the cargo tank are designed So this is the refrigerated ships on uh, each vessel. So we have different types of tanks, uh, refrigerated, fully refrigerated and fully pressurized, depending on the gas and temperature. We want to carry it in fully refrigerated or fully pressurized. So this is a typical example, typical example of a refrigerated, fully refrigerated ship. And you have this prismatic shaped tanks. We have a secondary barrier, which is outside hull. And we have a primary barrier, which is the inner part of the tank. And then you have insulation with perlite that we will see in detail. Then you have the central line division, 
for the cargo to avoid moving and uh, chocks chokes on which this system is sitting <laughs>